Okay, so this section is going to focus on the hip joint and pelvic girdle. So as we kind of move into the, the lower extremity portion of the class, we're going to begin here at the hip joint and pelvic girdle. Now, I will note that we will be talking a little bit about the anatomy around the knee. Part of the, the reason for that is, even though we do have a separate talk on the knee, in, in kind of looking anatomically, particularly a lot of the muscles, there are a lot of two joint muscles in this section. So we'll be looking at some knee anatomy within this talk, just because again, a lot of the, the muscles from the hip are gonna go down and insert um, at the knee joint. So we'll be kind of giving a little bit of a preview of the knee joint um, along with obviously the hip and, and pelvic anatomy. Okay, so really uh, quick here as you're kind of going through this, so I don't have this in the notes, but um, hopefully you've read the chapter prior to, to looking at this. So here's a little way to kind of start testing yourself. So here's a little uh, in-video lecture quiz that you can take on your own just for practice. So if you want, just pause on this screen for a little bit and see if you can go through and name the, uh, name the bones and bony landmarks that are listed here. So take it, take a few minutes, pause this, um, and then you can see if you got your uh, answers correct. Okay, so um, looking at the, the hip joint and pelvic girdle, so a couple things just to kind of note um, related to the, the, the hip and pelvis. So, um, in looking at the hip joint or the acetabular femoral joint, it's relatively stable. So the, the bony architecture, so it's a ball and socket joint um, similar to the, to the glenohumeral joint. Uh, however, if you notice, the bony architecture of the hip joint is much different. It's a much more stable joint relative to the, to the bony architecture. You also do have a lot of strong ligaments and large supportive muscles in the region. And again, it's because of the fact of what, of what the hip's responsible for. It's responsible for weight bearing and locomotion. So because of that, you know, a lot of forces get transmitted through the hip. So it, you, you need a lot of that supportive structure there. So again, it's, it's the, the hip's enhanced by its wide range of motion. And also because of the large support structures around it also enables it to function in a lot of various functional ways. You know, here the ability to run, cut, cross over, sidestep, you know, all the things that you typically think of with, with vigorous physical activity, the hips uh, designed to withstand that. So we're going to look at the bones and the bony landmarks. So here again, we're looking at the lower extremity. So we're we're looking here at the anterior portion. If you look at the um, the left side of the screen, you see the anterior portion. And again, looking at a picture like this anteriorly, it's really easy to tell because you have the patella on the knee. If you look, if you look right here, you can see the patella. So that's obviously the front part of the knee. Um, and then again, here you could kind of look. So be, be looking at at the way the landmarks kind of line up. So here you're essentially looking at all your bony landmarks in and around the hip um, on the anterior side. Here's the posterior side of the uh, the lower extremity. So obviously you can see the you know the, the femoral condyles give away that, that this is the you know you can see the posterior side of the femoral condyles, the intercondylar notch, kind of showing this is the posterior side of the uh, the lower extremity. Now most of our focus is going to be proximal. Um, however, there are going to be bony landmarks that we look at distally here because again of the the close relationship um, anatomically between the the hip and the knee joint. All right, so if we look at the the bones in the pelvis, so you have the right and left pelvic bones. You can see those um, right here. So you have your right and left pelvic bones. They're joined posteriorly by the sacrum. So this is the the, the sacrum right in the middle. The inferior from the sacrum is the coccyx. So the coccyx, also known as the tailbone. And then you have the femur connecting to the acetabulum. So that femoral acetabular joint is right here where you have the, the connection, and that is your actual hip joint. Um, so we'll be talking about some of the other bones and bony landmarks of the, um, the pelvis, particularly beginning up at the, uh, at the sacrum and pelvis. So in looking at the sacrum, uh, the sacrum consists of five fused vertebrae. 
And then inferior to that is your coccyx or your tailbone. So if you look at the, the two pictures, again, you have a posterior and an anterior view. Here's your anterior view. So again, here's your sacrum. So the sacroiliac joints are what connects the sacrum to the other, uh, to, to the pelvic bones. And then you have your five fused vertebrae, and then you have the coccyx or the tailbone present right there. The coccyx is also composed of, of fused vertebrae as well. Then we look here at the actual pelvic bones. So the pelvic bones each are comprised of three sections. So you have the ilium, ischium, and pubis. So, and all of those bones are delineated, they're color coded here. So the ilium's in yellow, the ischium's in blue, and the pubis is in red. So it's important to be able to kind of distinguish the, the borders because again, there's, there's not these major distinct borders between these three bones. They're kind of all one big section. So um, here you see those individual bones. So you have to start with being able to kind of separate the individual bones and then be able to identify. So this, this, this picture, identifies all the landmarks, but you'll have to be, you know, first able to kind of separate the individual bones themselves. So here's your, again, pelvis, pelvic bone, lateral view. So here you're looking at a lateral view and you can see your key landmarks here. So you have your acetabulum. Then if you go to the ilium, you have the iliac crest, ASIS, AIIS, and PSIS. So that's the, that stands for the ASIS is the anterior superior iliac spine. AIIS is anterior inferior iliac spine, PSIS is posterior superior iliac spine. Then as you go to the ischium, um, one of your key landmarks there is your ischial tuberosity. There's some other landmarks there as well. You have the ischial spine, the lesser sciatic, and the, uh, the lesser sciatic notch. Then the pubis, you have the pubic tubercle and the, the pubic ramus are also on there. So if we kind of just go around a little bit. So again, remember those dividing lines? that you saw in the, the previous picture. So your, your ischium is essentially everything from the ischial spine around through the ramus of the, the ischium. And then you can kind of see the, the inferior ramus of the pubis kind of is, is, is continuous with the, inferior, with the uh, ramus of the ischium. So it's kind of important to be able to have that little separation in there when you're kind of looking at that. So if you kind of think about Again, the, you know, the, the little color coded sections that we went over the last time, if you're looking at this, um, so again, here's kind of your, you know, if we start up here at the ischial spine, and kind of color all in around there to the ramus of the ischium, and then you kind of, you know, you kind of cut that off right around there, and then you kind of start in this section with, you know, starting to look at the, at the pubic bone, okay? So that kind of goes through and shows you how you would do that. Obviously, the rest of the upper portion you would be you would be looking at the um, at the ilium. So in addition to again knowing the landmarks, it's important to be able to separate those um, those different bones. <clears throat> so here's a medial view. So from a medial view, you can see um, the the important landmarks here. Again, similar landmarks. That you've seen with some, uh, but again, be able to look at the bone from a from a medial standpoint, be able to identify that that's the view that you're looking at. You also have the the additional one that you have on the medial view is the iliac fossa. So the iliac fossa, which you obviously can't see, so you can't see this on the lateral view. You can only see the iliac fossa on a medial view of the of the ilium. Okay, going to a lateral view. So if we come around here to the to the lateral view of the of the hip. So again, you have the the femoral head articulating with the acetabulum. So that's your your joint right here. It's supported by those by those strong ligaments. So you know, going back to what we had talked about before. So again, just looking at this picture, you know, what bones and landmarks do you know? So you can pause here and and start to maybe identify some different landmarks that you could see in this picture and then see which ones that you're missing. So pause for a few minutes, write some of the landmarks down that you're able to identify based on what you've seen before and what you've read and then um, see what you've missed. <clears throat> so going to, the, going to the femur, you have your key landmarks. So you have the femoral head, 
You have the greater and lesser trochanters, you have the femoral neck, and then you have the intertrochanteric line. So um, again, greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, you're gonna have your intertrochanteric line, femoral neck, femoral head, okay? So those are some of the key landmarks on the proximal portion of the femur. Now, when we start to look at muscles, there's seven two-joint muscles that have one action at the hip and another at the knee. So really, once we do actually talk about the knee by itself, there's not really going to be a lot of new muscles because um, a lot of them would have already been covered in, in, looking at the, uh, in looking at the hip. So muscles moving the hip, so this is something important, muscles that move the hip will originate on the pelvis and insert either on the femur or the tibia. Okay, so they're either going to insert on the, the, the femur, whether it be on the proximal or distal femur, or on the tibia, which is one of the bones of the lower leg. So again, here's back to another view, again, with all of your, your bones and bony landmarks. You might want to, again, take a, take a minute, you know, extra few minutes on this just to pause it, just to look at these landmarks. But what we're going to be looking at, so again, here obviously we have our anterior, here's our posterior view. Now we're gonna to start to look at, so even though we don't really focus on the knee until the next discussion, we have to focus, do some, do a little bit of knee anatomy just because of the fact a lot of the muscles are gonna come down and insert on some of these, uh, these more distal landmarks in and around the knee. So looking at the knee joint, um, so the knee joint is primarily a hinge joint, or we call it a modified hinge joint. The reason why we call it a modified hinge joint is because of the fact it can produce rotation. So when we'll discuss that more when we actually get into the actual knee joint itself. Primarily, the, the, the motions that occur are flexion and extension. But when the knee is flexed, it does have the ability to internally and externally rotate. So you do have the enlarged femoral condyles that articulate on the enlarged tibial condyles. You have the medial and lateral tibial plateaus. They receive the condyles. The tibia is the, the large uh, medial bone, which bears most of the weight. Um, the fibula does, which is the other smaller bone on the outside of the lower leg, does bear a little bit of weight. It's debated how much, but it's, it's very little. The, the, the tibia is the primary um, weight-bearing bone in the, in the lower leg.